All right, man. All right, man. What's going on, Curtis? In the building. <laughs> What's up with it, my What's man? On? How's it going? Uh, nothing much. I'm in uh, Texas. All so, right. Uh, pretty desolate out here, but you know, on the grind. Hey, I fucks with for the money. I, I, I fucks with Texas, bro. Shit, I, I fucks with Texas. Well, only I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can say that I actually fuck with the whole state, but you know, Dallas, Houston. Uh, you know those those two particular ones is where majority of my where majority of my subscribers come from. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you uh, so where you have a, a dedicated run from uh, Michigan to Cali, and then oh. you know turn around and go back. Oh, okay. That's about that's about a good fuck. That's about a good 3,000, 3,000, 3, 3,500 mile run. That's what's up. Yeah. 12 stops. All right. Uh, so, so we making a, so we pretty, we, is this a, is this a, how, how can I say, is, is, is this owner operator or you're, you're a company driver? No, I'm just a company driver. Uh, I've been, I've been a CDO holder since 2018. Okay. Um, and I've been driving for maybe a year and a half of that time. Okay, that's what's up, man. All right, so tell uh, so tell my peoples uh, where where you hail from, man, and, and give a little bit of background about yourself. Uh, well, I was city of Detroit. Um. You would know that by having a conversation with me, but I was definitely born and raised from uh, D Town. That's my city. Uh, that's where my family uh, lives at. If they don't live in specifically the city of Detroit, mm -hmm. they stay in Metro Detroit, i.e., being cities around that area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm adopted uh, in foster care since the age of uh, five. Um, okay. Got adopted. I think I was around like eleven or twelve. Did you, um, you you say you was you say you was bounced around in for, uh, foster care uh, since you was five? Did so? Did you know your biological yeah, parents? I was I was a, I was a heathen. <laughs> I was a very <laughs> so familiarly. I was a heathen. I was a very difficult, very difficult child, just oppositionally defiant mm -hmm. against authority. I still kind of am now, but obviously I've grown and matured a lot. Um. I am still in I, I am still in contact with uh, my uh, biological family. I okay. go and see them, uh, you know, typically every time I get back home. Well, not every time, but when I have time for it, because um, I'm usually out ten to fourteen days. Right. Um, I'll you know stop. Well, yeah, city, going. You know, yeah, driving. With my yeah, people. driving from Michigan to Cali. Yeah, that's that's yeah. about that. Yeah, that's that's about a good that's about a good couple of weeks, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead, continue. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm definitely I'm in contact with uh, my biological family. Um, I'm still in, uh, obviously, contact with my adopted mom because she basically raised me. Um, let's see, I graduated uh, high school out in uh, Livonia, Stevenson uh, High School. Went to college thereafter for a little while. Um, kind of decided it really wasn't for me. Um, you know, I still debate on if I'm going to go back or not. I just really don't see the point right now because my focus is, you know, on the money, right. you know, grinding. Right. right. Um, it's not that I'm not smart enough to obviously be in, uh, be in college. It's just not for me right now. I got you. Um, I got you. And I just don't see the point of getting in debt. So say if I were to go back to college, it would be, you know, from my own pocket because therein lies the incentive for me to, you know, go through with it and complete it because I'm paying for it. Right. Um, what else? Uh, uh, like I, you know, mentioned in our uh, previous uh, exchange via email, I am a uh, felon. Um, yeah, you... Uh, maybe you, don't have any qualms. Yeah, you, uh, you, you, uh, you... You, you know, you, you came out. Uh, you you was you was convict you was convicted of a un unarmed robbery uh, back in twenty thirteen. Right. So, 
yeah. uh, what uh, what what led if if you don't mind, you know, sharing your story, uh, what led up to you know what what led up to the robbery? What you know you. So what, what basically, happened? if I could give the long and short of the story, I was okay. in um, happened in Grand Rapids, uh, basically in a situation to where I was in like homeless and like without without right. money. Right. Um you had to do what you had to do. I'm not yeah, and I'm not a person who and I'm not saying it's right, but in my mind I justified it at that time. Mm-hmm. Um I'm not a person who was gonna just walk into an old lady, knock her upside the head and say, Give me your money. Right. So I'm like, well I can just go into this Walmart and I can go, you know, steal food and right. other things that I need and be good. Um, and obviously that didn't go over too well because I got caught. Um, and, you know, obviously it I think I was like 18 or 19 at, around that time when that happened. Um, and I, you know, got stopped at the door and they said, where's your receipt? Obviously I didn't have it. Um, so, you know, they took me into the little loss prevention office, you know, did the whole, you know, questioning thing, this, this, and that. Hold up, hold up, hold, um, hold, hold, up, hold up. This is like this. This is like what Walmart or something like that. Yeah, it's, it was a Walmart. Yeah. Uh, okay, and what? Um, uh, they, they they seriously put a robber. Is is the robbery stemming so from I'm, the I'm, Walmart? I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get to the point to why it became what it was. Oh, I'm, I'm getting oh, that, but I'm providing oh, context oh, oh, okay, leading okay, up to that. Okay, okay, okay. So after they, you know, took me into the office, there were like three people in there. One of them was like this taller, kind of fit dude, right. and uh, you know, I'm evaluating the room obviously because I don't want to be here, and I'm thinking of a way to escape. Right. So I'm like, well, that's the only dude <laughs> that can keep me in this room. Okay. Um, because the other two, uh. The other two people, one was a female, the other one was a dude. Um, So he took basically the items that I stole and took that to the back and was, I guess, doing an itemization of it to come up with the value of what it was. Um, So I'm like, well, once he left, I'm like, well, that was the only dude who could keep me in here. So, and they were uh, parlaying, contacting the authorities and basically, you know, me getting, putting in handcuffs. Um, so I'm like, well, dude, I'm not going to sit around here and wait for the police to get here. I'm <laughs> going to leave. So I made a dash for the door. Okay. Um, and the lady that was standing there blocking the door um, attempted to prevent me from leaving uh, no, and no, pretty much move. grabbed me around my waist. Um, and I kind of shook her off. Right. And, you know, made a mad dash out the door. They caught me like three, three or four months later. Um, Dang. but okay. so that's, so that's, so that action is what bumped it up from retail fraud to felony on our robbery because that person, that lady, she was uh, hurt. who attempted her to, yes, to prevent me from leaving, uh, said that she was injured. Um, and albeit in my opinion, it was BS. She was, yeah. she said I elbowed her in the, uh, forehead and threw her to the ground which is which was a ball face lie um but yeah so you know they kind of took that and ran with it and um crazy so seven you, months so you so they they how you said a couple of months later they they was able to find you so what you was like yeah what, in the streets driving well you got they, pulled basically over, i, I kind of got house. tired yeah, I kind of got tired of, like, living life on the run oh, <laughs> as a wanted man. Um, and, you know, I got in, I got into it with some dude at this uh, park, and the police got called. And, you know, when they ran my name, they seen I had a, so warrant, had a warrant and arrested me. So, I, you know, I could have finagled my way out of that, but it's like, you know, I might as well go ahead and face the consequences and, you know, get this done and over with. So, so wait, uh, so, they, so you, so they, you know, you, you, you went to court. I, I'm assuming, mm-hmm. I'm assuming they gave you, uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, uh, I, damn it. What do you call a free lawyer? The, the ones that they give you? Uh, uh, um, a court appointed attorney. A court of, yeah. Uh, okay. So they gave you. A court appointed attorney, a legal aid type of guy, 
them type of guys right there gets a lot of work, you know, and sometimes yeah. they, they and may not, not be in their best interest. Yeah, be in your to, best interest, yeah, right. To properly defend you. They're right. basically there to make sure that your legal that you rights have. are not violated, but mm -hmm. not to fight for you. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, 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 hey, hey, kids, that's, uh, that's one to grow on. So you better, hopefully you have some cheese and you can get your own lawyer that can fight for you. I'm just saying, uh, bro, so this all stemming just from Walmart, just, just for getting some food, bro. And they, they put you, they, they, they lock you up for that. For how I, long? I was, I was worse than the poop on the bottom of your shoe wow. because of the way that this woman depicted me. Now, I'm, I, I haven't read my... I, I've, if I was to read you my pre-sentence investigation uh -huh. verbatim, it is completely laughable um, because the lady basically said that she had to go to speech therapy. She had to go to Mary <laughs> Free Bed out in uh, downtown Grand Rapids. Um, this situation well, you know affected what? her and you, such you know a point what? that it affected her relationship with her daughter no, you you know what nonsense. you you know what she she probably got she probably got you know her lawyer because what her lawyer was probably doing was going no, after it was, a, it was a workers it was a workers comp money grab is what it was yeah yeah that's what i'm saying as a, as a pawn exactly you know she you know used you know, like, you, you know, lawyers, you know, when you get a lawyer, they do the same thing. They, they go after the they go after the company that got the money. So what they want, they what they want you to do, because that's what happened. You know, when I got hurt and, it, I, you know, I got hurt, but it wasn't hurt that bad. But, you know, my lawyer at the time told me, here, go to this choir practice Play every week. You know what I'm saying? Right. Go to this choir practice every week. Go to this. uh go to this place every week, go to that place every week. And, you know, he, he puts it all in a package together to come when he comes to court and say, you know, this is what my client went through all that time. And this is, and this is the amount that he, he or she had to pay out. So that's what they, that's what they did with her, man. So in order, in order, you know, I'm, I'm assuming Walmart must've paid her big time or the, or the uh, workman's yep. count must have paid her bid time. So they yep. figured that she had to miss like. Oh, go ahead. Things total into me, basically, if you and if you include uh, court costs, uh, my restitution was about fourteen thousand dollars. Wow. Wow. So in order in, in order for Walmart to get payback. They, they, they wanted some time out of you, huh? Yep. Wow. So how much? How I much? Get how, a, how much time? How, how much time they gave you? So I did. So I got. So this happened in. Uh, this happened in 2013, and I was. I was officially convicted. I believe uh, that following year, January of 2014. Okay. Um, so I did like seven months in county county jail. Right. Uh, and got released to like this halfway house type program and, and had to do that. Um, I did that for about a year. Um, picked up a pro, uh, probation violation during that time uh, because I was kind of uh, bucking the rules of the uh, place that I was staying at. Right. Um, and by the way, there's a horrible, horrible place <laughs> in Grand Rapids, alternative directions. And yes, I'm name dropping because they got roaches and everything. <laughs> and yeah, the place was disgusting. Um, and I, I even wrote to the, uh, to the news and, you know, was talking about some of the stuff that was going on in there. But right. Nonetheless, um, that happened. Uh, so I got, so I had the restitution. Um, I did the seven months in county jail. I also was put on uh, three years, uh, three years probation. probation. Now you say you had a probation um, violation. So did that 
did that put you did that put you well, in jail? Well, basically what happened was that they sent me to jail for like two weeks and made me have to go back to the halfway house and start that program over again. Oh, okay. Or go back. Yeah, or uh, my other choice was go back before the judge and get resentenced and face going, going to prison. Obviously, I didn't want to go to prison, so okay, send me back to the program and I'll start over. So, um, did that. Um, or no, I'm sorry, this was uh, 2014. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, and I was... <laughs> oh, take your time, man. Take your time. You, you, okay, <laughs> you okay over there? Yeah, allergies. I didn't say my allergy pills. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this, I'm sorry, this happened in 2014. Got sentenced January 15th, uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. um, got, uh, got sentenced to three years probation. So my probation term would have, God, I keep feeling like another sneeze is going to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so my probation term would have been up January 15th of 2018. Mm -hmm. So I knocked my pro, uh, probation term down, moved in with a chick who I was dating out in uh, Ypsilanti, which is near the Ann Arbor area. Well, oh, hold on. Um, I'm, I'm still, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm still like, like, wow on the situation. You only did seven months in jail, right? Yep, in county jail, only did seven months. So <laughs> in county jail, you you only did seven months, right? Right. So Correct. they they got you booked as a felon. I mean, you only did yep. seven months. Doesn't matter. I'm, I was the worst thing that could have ever got spit out of the city of Detroit. Wow. That didn't matter. I had a judge who was very uh, tough. Mm -hmm. Um, his name was, I'm name dropping in this, by the way, um, his it's name cool. and all it's this cool. is, is public information. I, I don't really care. He's retired anyways, but, um, his name was Dennis Lieber. Um, one of the worst, worst judges and, uh, most worst and toughest judges in, uh, in Kent County. Um, so yeah, it, it was not in my favor and I, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to, you know, uh, obviously do the, the, the short, long, short version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. um, uh, I go to MC, uh, move in with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We're dating or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working. Um, and when I got sentenced in January, uh, 15th of 2015, you know, you get a paper saying what your conditions of probation are. Right. And there's a line that says, you know, if you have restitution or court owed obligations, you have to get uh, a job. What they expect you would know what they expect you to pay and how often they expect you to pay that amount. And that section that was blank for me. There was no you have to pay this this uh, this amount of money at this interval. Okay. So when I got my pro uh, probation moved from King County King County to Washtenaw County. Um, my supervising agent basically told me, pay what you can, um, every month. She was like, I can't, you know, go to bed for you, defend you if you just get out here and not making any payments at all. So I'm like, cool. I wasn't making a whole lot of money working on lawn service. So I would pay anywhere from 50 to $150 a month. Um, so fast forward to, um, to... I want to say February of 2018, I uh, graduated um, trucking school in now, December of 2017. I made the decision to go to school, started in January right. of 2018. What's, and, now, uh, now, since we, now, since we, you know, fast tracked in, 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 into your, into your trucking, what, um, what how how did you find how, how did you find trucking how how did you come across of wanting to get into the well, trucking well it's something i've always wanted to do um but i just wasn't at an age because you know you have to be like age 21 or older um and that was one of the stumbling blocks that i had at a point in time i wasn't old enough but then when i became old enough i didn't know how to 
go about it because I'm not because I pay, I can't afford to pay. For it. All right. So when it, when no income, so when uh, so when you got when you got to the school, so you actually you you actually went to a school. You didn't go to uh, a trucking company. You didn't go through a trucking company. Right? Yeah, yeah. I went to a I went to a school. I went to two schools in my vicinity and basically told them my situation. Like, hey, um, this judge is on my ass. He's trying to send me to prison. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and I know that the trucking industry, I can come in, make a decent amount of money, and pay these obligations off. Okay, that's what's um, up. Is that going to be a deterrent? Is my background or anything going to be a deterrent? They were like, no. Um, At least one that's of the what schools, the lady, her name was uh, Kim Kimberly Quinn. Mm -hmm. She literally walked me step by step on how to get a uh, a oh, WIOA. Great. Grant, okay. uh, uh, Michigan Works. Okay. Walk me step by step. Hey, go to this location, speak to this dude. You're going to have to do some, you know, go through some formalities, fill out some paperwork. But the long and short of it is you'll get what you want, which is, you know, get, get, in, get, get your seat here and go to school. All right. So you, right. uh, so you, so you, you, you got the grant. So the grant pretty much took care of your schooling. Uh, you, right. you know, you got out. Of course, you got your CDLs. So we don't have to go through, yep. you know, all of that getting in, you know, going and and getting into the to the trucking industry as, you know, as a driver with a felon background. How much how, how much, uh, you know, what was your experience of trying to get in to one of these companies that it give you an opportunity? Benefit that my school had. Uh, a job placement coordinator who basically work with everybody in their individual situation to help find them a company. Um, but I'm not going to say it was easy because it wasn't. Right. Um, but I had him, I had his resources to pull from and the relationships that he established with small companies and um, owner operators or whoever who needed drivers who handled things on a case-by-case -case basis okay. and basically wanted somebody who was young, hungry, ready to hustle and let their work speak for them versus their background. Okay. Um, so I found a company out in Holland, uh, Transway Inc. It was a good company. They took me straight out of school uh, with no experience. Um, and I worked for them for about six months. Okay. Now, during that, during that time frame from when I first started with Transway versus when I ended uh, or graduated school, I got called back into court out in the Grand Rapids, um, and the long and short of that was uh, my judge was complaining about the fact that you was I still too had slow. a balance of <laughs> yeah, I, had, I still had a balance of $12,000 on this restitution uh, restitution Your uh, that was supposed to be paid in full by January 15th of 2018 and I'm like and I argued the fact that that was the unreasonable demand to be put on me because I wasn't making that money I brought in text IRS text transcripts to show the amount of money that I was making and basically he didn't care um, and he even subpoenaed my superv supervising agent to come all the way from Washington County and uh, Ann Arbor to come all the way to Grand Rapids and basically put her on the stand braid her and tell her how she didn't know how to do her job and this, this, and that. So long and short of that is, hey, you have $12,000 uh, owed on, on your restitution. You have, I'm going to give you a suspended sentence of six months. You have six months to come up with $12,000 wow. or you're going to prison. Wow. Obviously, I didn't have that $12,000. So in uh, October of 2018, I was sentenced to 15 months in Michigan Department of Correction. Hell. So why, that pretty why, much wait, 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 wait. Why, my, you, why, why are you driving? Are, are yes. you still driving I'm at like, this hey, time? I'm like, I argued I the mean, fact you told that him, I you went might, to... You told him that you I got a job, though. I went to trucking though. school to make more money right. so I could make, you know, higher payments towards this. He didn't care. But you... You come, you come, you come up with this money in six months or go to prison. Wow. And the only way for me to have come up with that money would have been for me to rob the bank, which I don't do, <laughs> or sell drugs, which I don't do either. But wait a minute, so you was still... Those... Curtis, Curtis, you you was driving at this point while the judge is over here trying to... Yes. Try, 
I mean, you, I I mean, told, you told him that, right? The time, yeah, I told my employer at the time that, hey, I'm pretty, I'm finna go to prison. Um, so, you know, I want you to know that I will not be working for you at this date because I have to go home and get my affairs together and prepare to go to prison. Wow. So he was like, all right, I understand it. He even sent a letter of uh, a character, a character, um, character letter. reference letter for me to my judge. He pretty much dismissed all of that. I mean, even my own supervising agent came on the stand to defend me and say, hey, I haven't had any problems with uh, with Curtis. Right. You know, he's fulfilled all his probation obligations. Right. He's making payments on his restitution. Right. You know, he's making payments every month. He hasn't missed a payment. He's paying what he can afford. So, um, yeah. So there was that. Um, so... And, and, he still I did and, to, and he still sent you to... 15 months yes so, so a um, after you got so after you did the after you did the 15 month bid how was it and you was already driving for a company before you got before you got convicted again right what, what did the company that you was previously driving for was was they all open doors for you? Because I'm I'm assuming you didn't. Yeah. So so while I was in while I was locked up in prison, I wrote them and reached out to them like, hey, this is my earliest release date. This is when I should be getting out. Right. Um, you know, can I come back here and work here? And dude was like, they wrote me back. They was like, no problem. We had no issues with you. Okay. You are a good employee. Um, as long as we have a, a truck open, it's yours. If okay. not, you'll be waitlisted wait until one becomes available, which okay. is, you know, common practice. Okay. So fast forward, I get out of, get out of, um, get released, uh, January, January of, blah, this is 2021. 20, so 20, 20, uh, so 20, yeah, January, yeah. 2020. Um, and now I'm on parole. So I graduated from probation. Now I'm on parole. Because okay. when you... All right, dealing with uh, county time, you get probation. But when you get state, right, you, know, you go to uh, Department of Correction is pro. Or Ooh, federal let, let me stop. Well. Now, let me stop you right here. I, I, I know you're going to go a little bit further, but let me stop you right here. Being that you was coming out on parole, did that hinder you from getting yes, back? And I'm work? getting to that. There you go. So, yeah. So I got out. You know, had the conversation with my uh, my parole agent, like, hey, because I had a game plan, like, hey, I'm doing this, this, and this when I get home. Like, within the first 24 hours of me being released, I had money to get a cell phone. Like, I was, right. you know, in there in prison working, getting the little crumbs that they was giving us, saved up. I think I left prison with a couple hundred dollars. Okay. I used that, went straight to Metro PCS, bought a phone. So, boom, I know I need a phone to obtain employment. Um, so I told her, I'm like, hey, uh, this company that I used to work for is out in Holland. They're willing to uh, work with you, you know, reemploy me, um, you know, with my whole situation. I even brought, showed her the letter that they uh, sent me while I was locked up. Right. Um, and she pretty much told me, like, no, um, you're not going to be OTR because that's what that's what I was. I was OTR. I wasn't running all 48 states. It was really mainly regional. But she was like, no, I need you to find something that's local. So I kind of, we kind of went back on, back and forth on that because I'm like, well, I don't have a year experience. And a lot of these local places require you to have that. Right. So I'm like, the only way for me to get that experience to, um, to work local is for me to go back OTR. And I'm like, and I, I literally had a job offer from the company that I used to work for, plus maybe six other places willing to take me and she was like nope 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 that don't work for me so i ended up having to take a a little warehouse job did that for a while COVID happened i got laid off from that because i was only working there through like a temp service so i circled back around to because mind you i'm going from making you know a thousand plus dollars a week to making right. two three hundred dollars like bro i'm not finna do this like no we no we not finna do this but no so uh so i circle back around to the conversation like hey you know 
um, COVID's going on. I want on. to work. Yeah, yeah. I want to work in a CDL field because that is going to pay me the money that I need to make the restitution. Uh, to mind you, that to yeah, exactly. So, a uh, job opportunity uh, came along. It was a company based out in Grand Rapids, and mm-hmm. like I say, I, I name drop because I, I have no qualms about anything. I'm an open book. I ain't got nothing to hide. Gotcha. Um, so the name of the company was uh, Pearson Foods. Great company. Okay. Um, shout out to them because they they showed me love, gave me opportunity. Actually, they still trying to get me to come back and work for them, but you know. Um, so they gave me opportunity to explain my situation to them. They was like, boom, no no problem. Um, they had a conversation with my, uh, supervisor agent, you know, we were able to, you know, come to, uh, sit down, have kumbaya, come to an understanding, have a conversation. She green lighted it. And what a lot of people have to understand is that you may want to work at these places, but your supervising agent has to approve that. So now if this, you want to work this is, here this, this and is, they say, no, you cannot work there. This is, this is your, this, this is being on, on parole, right? Correct. This has been on parole. Okay, so your parole so, officer, your your parole officer, pretty much, and I, you know what, I could probably understand why she didn't want you to go OTR from state to state. That's understandable, but still, on the flip side, on the flip side of that, in order to get your experience, you you sometimes have to. But the company that, yeah. uh, but the, but the, but the food and company. See, here's my thing. Mm-hmm. That when I was on, when I was on probation, I had what was called a travel permit. Oh, okay. And on that travel permit, and I had an agreement and an understanding with my supervising agent at that time that, hey, this is the company that I'm going to be uh, working for. This is my immediate supervisor. These are the, uh, the states that I'm going to be, um, these are the states that I'm going to be, um, operating in and she was like okay so she was like i i any state that your company operates in i need to be on this paperwork because if you go to a state outside of what's on this paperwork and you get stopped that could that could be a technical rule violation yeah, yeah. so she was like you know make sure you encompass everywhere that they have freight so that that way that i can make sure that you are covered so that you're no you have no issue and keep this paperwork on you at all times for if you get stopped, Just you can show case. it to show that, hey, you have permission to do what you're doing. All so right. Boom. So I was thinking that I could take this same mindset and agreement and situation over to being on parole. And that didn't work with her in the beginning. She was kind of giving me uh, some pushback and some issues on that. But we eventually came to a consensus because um, I did have my mom on her head calling her, blowing up, like, look, my son ain't no miscreant. He's actually an upstanding mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. You know, he's trying to do something with him, trying himself. Trying to do something with your mistake. life. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I work, so I work for uh, Pearson. They were a produce company. Basically, what I did, I ran from uh, Indianapolis back to Grand Rapids, or I would go to the Chicago International uh, Fruit Market and okay. bring stuff and uh, bring stuff back. So right. you know, it's kind of like an album, album back type uh, type deal. Okay. So let me. So I did that. Let me let me ask you this right quick. So doing the uh, let me let me ask you this. Um, it seems as it seems as though, uh, it seems as though, you know, e- everything still worked out uh, worked out good for you as far as you know you getting in you getting in with a trucking company. One of these, well, actually two companies despite your background gave you the opportunity to come in and and do the damn thing right so i i want to i want to ask you this i want to ask you this question are you this is 2021 so all of this is going on doing 20 are you still on parole nope i got off parole wait what are we at when some sometime earlier this year i can't remember when is that uh I, oh wait, you know what? I said that back. I think it might have been uh, April. April. Okay. It was April because uh, because when basically when I uh, got discharged from parole is when I quit my job at Pearson and uh, started this job where I work at now. Okay. Now now now. So, of course you you came in 
you know, you, you came in and, uh, and, and thank you for the comment. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for being a, a subscriber. If you hit that subscribe button, um, you, you heard, you, you seen the video where I mentioned that another commenter said that felons or people with, you know, criminal backgrounds. Yeah, are basically second-class citizens and third yeah, don't deserve opportunities. Yeah, shouldn't be and a truck he's driver. A he's a piece of crap. And I, go, go ahead and, and tell me what your feelings about that. I get tired that. of people, yeah, I get tired of people um, who look at us as second-class, you know, citizens and that we're basically the crap on the bottom of your boot. Like, no, we are actually... For, for those of us who actually get out and want to do something with themselves, those are the individuals who I'm speaking of. I'm not speaking about the individuals who get out here, go back to drugs, get back on the block, hanging around the wrong same dudes. No, I'm talking about the people who get out, make a plan, and do something with themselves, and not only just talk about their plan and write down their plan, but they execute that plan. Those are the people who I'm speaking of and speaking to. So the individuals who have this notion um, that uh, that we are not deserving of the opportunity to be in this industry, that is false. I do not understand why people think that way um, because a lot of people get out here, they get out here, pay off their consumer debt, they start businesses, they, you know, uplift themselves out of um, impoverished situations and mindset. So this this has been very beneficial to me and people like me. So I, I just think it's crazy how people and and, and uh, a person, my mentor always says uh, privilege, you know, those who are privileged, they are blind to it because they are privileged. So you, so got, you don't okay. understand the privilege that you have because you can just go out, work anywhere at any job and do anything and don't have to worry about whether or not, you know, you're going to get accepted versus us. You know, get in and explain our situation and you know work 10 times harder to prove ourselves so you uh prove that we're worthy of the job so you, opportunity so you definitely definitely disagree with that damn with that statement wholeheartedly it's nonsense all right and and you know just to you know just to hear your story man i mean all that from just all that just for get just just for getting something to eat at walmart i mean you know it, it, doing that doing that situation all right so i mean i i wish i was making it up but unfortunately i'm not so what you know so you 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 know you you still relatively new into the game uh you're rocking out with a you're rocking out with a different company now you got you know you started up uh you started up your you know your own little business uh a escort was uh as you uh sent me How's how has trucking working for you? I mean, how has uh trucking worked out for you? What what's trucking done for you? Um, so trucking has allowed me to start my business. I have a, a, a S Corp. Um, I have a Dun and Brad Street number, I have a EIN, I have a business bank account, I have a website. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with my business as of yet, but it's legally established. Um, and I'm in the midst of building uh, business credit. I'm still kind of uh, on the fence as to if I'm going to go in the direction of the owner-operator thing or if I'm just going to completely stay away from the logistics um, industry and do something uh, different. Um, but in the meantime, I have to get myself to a point to where I'm fundable. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now. All right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Well, Curtis, man, I, I, I definitely appreciate you coming in. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you coming in, uh, sharing your story, sharing your experience and all like that. Uh, you, do you want to, you know, I, and I, you know, I tell people, I, you know, I tell people no, but if you want to. Uh, for you know, for credit reasons, you you want to shout out the the company you driving for now? Uh, no, I don't do that. There you go. <laughs> ain't nobody, exactly. ain't nobody about to ruin my situation. No, exactly. thank you. I will let you know when I leave here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna but, do that because uh, these uh these YouTube trolls is uh outrageous. Yeah, so they they you. yeah they 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 heavy. They they heavy something heavy for real. 
As a matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a comment another uh, a commentary on that. Uh, I just dropped another commentary on hours of service and what these and what these companies expect out of you. Um, speaking of which, let me ask you let me ask you this this question and see if you agree with it. Um, now I just did the commentary on hours of service, and I in that commentary I said that. The 10 hour, the 34 and the half an hour is yours. You you can do whatever you want to do on those on those set times. So, you know, your half an hour, you, you know, you sh shower and shave or whatever, your 10 hour, whatever, your 34 hour, whatever. But the the on duty, not so much, but the drive time does not belong to you. And what I mean by right. that, what I mean by that is that the company who you drive for, they want you to drive every bit of those 11 hours that's allotted to you on your drive time. Am exactly. I am I safe am I safe to am I safe to say that? What's your opinion on that? Um yeah, I mean honestly, I think the the whole point of you know being out here getting to the money is maximizing your your opportunity and you have 11 hours of opportunity to maximize your profit whether you're owner operator uh or a company driver whatever you know category you fall into so um it would be unwise to do anything less than driving your full 11 hours um i think a lot of people kind of you know maybe get out here and like the glitz and glam of it and are lazy or just don't have a a a drive or focus or uh, that one particular goal that they're working for it, whatever that is and i guess that's fine for them but for me um i run hard i run my full 11 hours uh you know uh do shut down do my 34 and go boss to the wall get back to michigan more often than not i'm calling operations like hey because i usually have extra hours left like hey do y'all got like a short run that I can do so that way I can, you know, insulate my check a little bit more. Um, and if they have it, they give it to me. If not, then I just go home for two, three days and come back and do it all over again. All right. So um, I see no in, I see no incentive in, in not um, doing my full 11 hours. All right. That's what's up, man. Curtis, man, thanks for coming on to the show, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you're definitely a citizen. Uh, like I said, you 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 are subscribed, right? Yeah, you you are subscribed. Yeah, most so, definitely. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Like I said, man, I appreciate your videos you. help me get through my drive shift, so I appreciate you. Hey, thank you, bro. Thank you very much, man. Hey, so you go ahead and uh be safe out there. You know, if you ever want to come back on to the show, man, just give me a call, knock it out, and then, you know whatever topic or whatever. Uh, you want to come back on and speak on whatever topic that's, 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 that's out there, man. Let me know. And, and we'll, we'll chop it up, bro. Most definitely be blessed. Continue what you're doing. Um, shout out to everybody out there. Continue to be great and continue to crush your goals and, and, and just being a positive, productive individual. Screw the haters because they going to be watching Why you being great. Exactly. All right, my G, take it easy now. Searching, 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 and searching, searching, searching. searching.